This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. Let's talk about how to set up an OpenBSD SSH server and client. So here on the tab one or the terminal one, I am running OpenBSD server. This is of course is a fake server running on VMM and on the tab two here is the client or my actual terminal and is going to act as the SSH client. So first of all, in case that your SSH daemon on the server side is not enabled, you have to enable that one in case you are running it on the VPS is already enabled by default otherwise you cannot access your server but in my case I have to enable it because this is the VMM and uh, during the installation I have forgotten that so do as rcctl enable sshd and then do as rcctl start sshd now on the client side we can actually connect to the server ssh pass the IP address 100 6423 and yes here i can specify the password now i am at the server this approach works but is a password based authentication and the password based authentication is unsafe because with a simple brute force script somebody sooner or later can crack your password and then they will take over your ssh server we are looking for an approach that we can run on the wild in a production and be safe and protected so we are going to start with the client side first we are going to install ssh key id this program helps us to transfer the public key to the server easily and afterwards we are going to generate a keeper so first of all pkg add ssh copy id the next step is to generate a pair of key for that one we can use ssh keygen with dash t flag to specify the algorithm the default algorithm is rsa with the length of 3072 bits of the key and this one is is the default and it's relatively secure and is high and highly backward compatible in case that you are more concerned about the security part you can increase the key size from 3072 to actually 4096 not the key size but may but uh, to be more precise and correct key length here so we can we can say rsa and then we say 496 however if you are very concerned about your security instead of rsa you can switch the algorithm to ed25519 this one the default key length is 256 bit and we can we are going to use that one here so ed25519 and we are already good to go we have to specify the file path for me the default one is good and then i highly recommend you to choose a very strong passphrase now we have generated the file so if we go to the ssh directory under clients and if we ls we have a public key and we have a private key both of this one you have to keep it uh, with yourself so you can actually restore it but more importantly you should never ever actually leak the private key otherwise somebody who owns that key can actually simply access to your server so keep this one in a safe place but in my recommend but i recommend you to keep both of them safe the next step is to copy the public key to the server so for that one ssh copy id and then dash i specify the file dot pop and then the server address 16423 so i have to give the password and now if we go to the server side under the ssh directory we should have the authorized key and if we go there we can carry it and you can see this is the public key copied from the client side and this one is under my user now that we transfer the public key to the server we can go and disable password based authentication and apply further security measures so for that one we are going to edit the ssh config file under etsy directory all the options in this file is commented we are going to add what we need at the end of it without bothering to uncomment things selectively the first thing is to actually change the log level from info to verbose so we have a better visibility of what is happening and we can audit our ssh server more precisely 
Afterward, we have to disable root login permits. So nobody with the root user can SSH to the server. Then we are going to disable password authentication. So there is no password authentication anymore. And also optionally, you can set the permit empty passwords to no here. And in case that you have no use for X11 forwarding, I recommend to disable that as well. And the next step is to change the default port. The default port is 22 and many bots are automated to ping that port or try to log in with that port. So we don't want that. We don't want extra headache. So we are going to change the port to, let's say something that is a bit more obscure, 917 here. And then we are, we don't want the client to keep the connection alive forever. In case that the client was inactive, let's say for five minutes, we want to disconnect and terminate the connection. So for that one client alive interval, we set it to 300 seconds, which is five minutes. And how many times we wait for this five minutes? We don't want to wait more than once. So in case that the client was inactive for five minutes, straight away disconnect and don't wait again. So client alive count max, we set it to zero and we are good to go with the configuration. Now we have to restart the SSH daemon on the server. So do as RCCTL, restart SSHD and now we are done with the server side so on the client side we can try whether things are working so ssh this one 164 to 3 and we get the connection refused because the port has been changed so we know that the changes are in effect and then with this one it asks for the passwords so we know the password authentication is not working anymore is disabled properly so we are technically done here however if you have multiple ssh servers or servers and you don't want to remember all the ip addresses uh, usernames port numbers etc simply speaking you can create the config file under the ssh uh, directory and then create aliases to ease the situation so let's do it config and here we can say host we can create an alias let's say open bsd server and then we have to specify the ip address 16423 and again we have to repeat the ip address here host name 16423 afterwards we have to specify the private key so the private key location is here i forgot the name so we do ls we grab the file name and then we go here paste it and finally we can pass the user so user would be this one and lastly we have to specify the port so we don't want to type the port anymore and we are good to go so if we try to ssh with my username obsd server we are good to go with the alias and everything working now do you remember that I mentioned to change the log level to verbose? That is useful in case that you want to audit the log and the log of the SSH demand is under war log, bots log. So here is the log of who connected, who attempted to connect, etc, etc, and from which IP address and so on. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to take a moment to thank Patreon contributors Grog with 30 generous dollar, Stellar Orbit with 20 generous dollar, OpenBSC Maximalist, Alexander M, Monty, Russell Willis, OpenBSC Enthusiast, DM, John Collins, Liquid Mobius, and OpenBSC Curious, Sicter.